Hello there, I'm Charles Anyagulu, and this is an abridged version of Arise Prime Time. Abridged because we'll be airing a special report marking the 10 year anniversary of Arise News in just a moment. But before we play that special film, a quick look at one of the stories that's emerged from Nigeria's election campaign trail, and that's the latest blooper from the presidential candidate of the ruling APC party, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Speaking in a Kwai Bomb state, Mr. Tinubu said, among other things, that he made the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, Nigeria's Senate president. Well, obviously, Mr. Abubakar was never Senate president, but is a former vice president. Unsurprisingly, that clangor has gone viral on social media. Let's take a brief look at it. They have no mandate. What they have na ice cream, he melt quick. You get me? They are yeah, yeah people. Atiku, where we make them send a president? Abba, you sell this, you sell that, assets, our commonwealth, our patrimony, everything that we have, we sell them, we become skeleton. Atiku, no care. As vice president. As vice president. Well, he got the correction there. For her reaction, I'm joined now in the studio by the journalist, political affairs commentator and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. And I noticed you were <laughs> having a, a jolly cackle there whilst the, um, the, the thing was running. What was your reaction to it? To Charles. I mean, <laughs> well, yes, I have to admit. It, it, it's funny, but it's not funny at the same time. I think that um, this does not do him any favors. It plays right into the suspicions and allegations that he does not have the presence of mind mm. to be president of a developing country like Nigeria, where the president has huge responsibilities. And of course, his handlers have said uh, again and again that he is okay. However, the suspicions continue because as you can see on the campaign trail, he seems to be unraveling. And in my estimation, Nigerians do not want another president that will be sick. We're experiencing that through the current president. And then former president Omar Musa Yaradwa was also sick. And you spend state resources to take care of these people. So it would seem like Aso Rock, the seat of the presidency, is a retirement home or a nursing home. Nobody wants that mm. because we have serious problems in this country. And people want a president that will hit the ground running from day one. Well, the APC have argued um, that, you know, people, we've seen a lot of bloopers and gaffes from the U.S. President Joe Biden and from the former U.S. Presidents George W. Bush and Ronald Reagan. But in spite of these gaffes, they discharged their duties as president very well. So just making a gaffe or a slip of the tongue doesn't necessarily mean that you're not capable of being president, does it? I mean, you are right that gaffes are common during you know, campaigns. And yeah, it happens. But Nigeria is not the United States of America. That is a very developed country with strong institutions. That's a very good when point. The, when the president is on the seat, he doesn't have to carry everything. The institution can run without him. You know, decisions can be taken, you know, without him. Mm. In Nigeria, we're not in that situation. We have been through times where the cabal hijacks the government. Nobody wants to see that. So you want someone who is sufficiently strong and agile. So people are right to be asking these questions, to be a bit worried. Of course, it looks like they are unperturbed, mm. but the questions keep coming again and again. Is he ready? Is he strong enough to carry on this responsibility that he is asking us as citizens to give to him? But beyond sort of puncturing the vanity of, of these candidates and their aides, and, and obviously raising some of the, the questions that you've raised, I mean, do people generally take what the politicians say in these rallies seriously, or is it just largely meaningless noise? 
I mean, sometimes y you could say that, yes, it's, it's a lot of noise. Most voters have decided mm. who they are going to vote for. Um, at the grassroots, when you go to the states, party members mm. are faithful to their parties. They are loyal supporters often. But this is an extraordinary election, Charles. This time around, it might be a bit different. So people are listening and are watching. When you go to social media, you can see a lot of fun is being made out of this. At the same time, people are pointing to this to say, you know what, we think there's something wrong with the APC candidate. Of course, his camp you know, have denied all of this, but we keep seeing with our own eyes. So mm. it is a challenge for the campaign. So in, in 30 seconds, could there be an upside to these gaps? I mean, is it possible that in a perverse sort of way, it, it makes a, the candidates more human and less remote and therefore more likable? I do not think so. It doesn't, it doesn't make them more human. I mean, other candidates are facing similar problems, but not as much as the APC. So mm. it, it is a problem. Constance, thank you very much indeed. And she is, of course, an Arise News analyst, journalist and uh, political affairs commentator. Thank you very much. You're indeed. welcome.